Hey everybody, it's Michael Martin. How you doing? I got a question from someone about calculating the expected value of a trade. You know, and it's it is something you could look up. Um, you know, I appreciate you asking me, um, but just to go through it once and for all, you're going to need a couple of things. One, you're going to need to know your total number of trades. You're going to have to calculate also uh, what's your winning percent, right? And from that, you'll be able to calculate your losing percent because they both have to add up to 100 percent then you're going to need to know your average win and your average loss and you can get that by you know downloading all your trades into a spreadsheet putting your wins in one column your losses in another and then just calculating the average at that point the formula for such is pretty forward um, so expected value is going to equal your winning percent multiplied by your average winner, subtract that, you know, your losing percent multiplied first by your average loser, right? And then this is, you're going to want this to be, you know, greater than zero at that point. Um, knowing this number is really what you should be optimizing in all of your trading. You don't want to follow rules that don't make you money, right? The famous one is whatever it is, roulette, right? Where your winning percentage is is one out of 30 what 38 i believe and when you win you win 35 but the problem is is that you're going to lose 37 over 38 times and you're going to multiply that by one because that's your bet size so you can see the math 35 over 38 minus 37 over 38 is never going to be positive even though it's fun to place bets and even though winner pays 35 to 1 right so you have to be careful about the game that you're playing your goal is to optimize this and to increase that so knowing how to calculate the strategy i guess is one thing but you know there's there's many ways to to increase your expected value obviously you could be more accurate not necessary but it certainly helps you will have winning streaks you will have losing streaks you could also increase your average winner. You can do that also by holding on longer. Like don't sell out of your winners too quickly. Don't just execute at two one two, you know, two R or three R three R. And especially, you know, if you want to make the big money, um, not scalping or day trading, you can certainly hold things overnight over the weekends. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Harder to do emotionally, but easy to do trading wise. You just don't offset it. Um, losing percent, you know, it depends on your rules. Um, and here I would say your average loss, you could probably cut that and make that smaller. Cause that's what you want over here is you want this to be smaller, you know, by putting in your stops, a lot of people are reluctant to put stops in so they don't do it. And then those losers become multiple of your R and, you know, that's probably an emotional situation is the reluctance to add in those stops. So um that's it i mean it's that simple it's not it's not terribly sophisticated once you get this number and the expected value of a trade um you know you can you can calculate it and put put these in as dollar signs right uh then you want the average number to be positive and from there you can use other formulas to kind of calculate how many trades you would need to put on with your expected value in order to hurt hit, hit certain bogeys or this and that but that's that's for another time so these are the inputs that you need i don't know where you keep your trade ledger maybe you can download it from your fcm or your introducing broker or your broker dealer it's easy to calculate your percent wins just you count them up um average win average loss it's all very very easy the spreadsheet does it for you and then this is the formula that you see here Again, I would try to strive to maximize expected value. Now, some of you might be trading for a while because this is really all-encompassing, right? This is just going to take and give you the expected value of everything that you do. But if you have like, you know, say you do, you know, cup and handles, you could do head and shoulders, and then you could do some kind of moving average crossover system, you could actually break the break it out and see what the expected value would be for each of those setups. It'd be probably better. And then this way, maybe learn to focus your efforts on the things that you're really good at. Um, this could obviously be up or down. 
So pick the one that doesn't matter to me. But then more fine tune your trading and just kind of see like where are you actually making your money and especially where are you losing it? What strategy do you like, but what, you know, maybe you can't trade it, right? That's one of the harsh realities of, of trading. But these numbers, you know, speak the truth because they're very results driven, right? So you look at the data and you see the higher the number, right? In terms of expected value, the EV, the higher the value, the better. And then you would want to do whatever you could to maximize that for yourself by, you know, just being completely honest with what your skill set may or may not be. You might find that as far as your average winner and your average loser are concerned, these are certainly a number of magnitude, but the way you can increase your average winner is by holding them longer. You're going to find that that might be more of an emotional issue for you to work on. But so the equation itself is very, very revealing because it gives you insight to your own behavior. Average losers, like I said, you can go back in and put in your protective stops. You don't want to put them in. No one wants to get stopped out of a trade. But, you know, you know, especially if you're only trading one instrument, you know, you, you might not have that many chances you know, to put on trades so that you're very reluctant to offset them when you do put them on. But, you know, again, that's a function of maturity. You're going to have to offset the trades if the criteria are hit and get out of it because small losses, or say it this way, bigger losses of 2R, 3R, 4R had to have been 0.5R or 1R at one point. They just, you let them get out of hand. So being that you could just enter protective sell stops if you're long only, you could very, very much avoid some of these bigger outsized, you know, losers.